Hello, hello. This is your host, Noemi, the cackling crone, and her cauldron of wisdom. And yes, of course, I'm excited again this week because I want to bring you a topic that I believe holds a massive amount of weight when it comes to spirituality. So I'm going to welcome you to Season 1, Episode 3, Mindful Moments. In this particular episode, I want to, I want to discuss meditation. Meditation in and of itself is seemingly pretty simple. But I want to dig into what meditation is, the different types of meditation. I want to dig into the benefits, both physical and metaphysical benefits, of, of actually meditating. We talk a lot about how to find your answers while you're meditating. And the biggest one that I think stumbles myself and quite a few other people is is how to properly achieve that meditative state where you can just be present in the moment. So I'm going to go grab a cup of tea. Hopefully you'll do the same or get whatever you fancy and settle in and we can begin our journey down the rabbit hole of meditation. So I'll be right back. So, welcome back to this week's episode of Mindful Moments. In this episode, we explore the world of meditation, its many facets, and how it truly can transform your life, not just your spiritual life, but other parts of it. And I'm your host, and today we're delving into the practice of meditation. We're going to cover what meditation is, the different types of meditation, so it kind of not a one-size-fits-all, the physical and metaphysical benefits. Well, what do we get out of it? And how do we go about finding answers? Everyone says, oh, someone, you're, you're supposed to be getting messages. How do we get those messages? And finally, I want to talk about how to achieve that very peaceful, serene state of meditative state. So let's see, let's begin with the fundamentals. What is meditation? Oh, meditation is basically, it's a mental practice. Um, A lot of people put it together with breath work and it involves basically just focusing attention, a focused attention and the most difficult quieting of the mind, which a lot of people tend to think that quieting the mind is actually not thinking, but that's nearly impossible. Actually, I think it is impossible. It's about being fully present in that moment and observing your thoughts without any judgments or anything of the sort. And trust me, quieting the mind, it's easier said than done. So until we learn and apply what it really means, and then you're like, oh, okay, I can, I can get this. But basically, like I said, meditation is just a, it's a practice of of putting yourself into a specific mental state and focusing your attention on just the present. Of course, there's a host of different types of meditation and each of them have their own unique approach. Uh, I want to talk about some of the most popular ones. And of course, we'll start off with mindful meditation. It, it, my, it, it basically involves just being aware of that present moment. Again, observing your thoughts, observing your feelings, and, and feeling your sensations, whether it be the wind in your hair or the, the chill on your skin. Maybe you're in the grass and you feel the grass at your feet. Just feeling and, and sensing that very moment. It's without attachment. It's a type of meditation in which you are focused on being intensely aware of what you're sensing and feeling in the moment. Not interpreting or judging it, just knowing what you feel. And practicing this mindfulness also sometimes involves breathing methods, guided imagery. Another practice is to bring the body into a relaxed state and bring the mind into a calmer state and it helps reduce stress levels. One of my most favorites 
one of them is the mantra based practice and that aims to transcend ordinary thought it, it works it wants to you to experience a, a deep set of restful awareness and it's a lot about the awareness this type of meditation it uses repetitiveness to clear your mind it basically says if you're focused on one word or one sound it's easier to focus on that and then your mind isn't wandering it could be a word a phrase a sound one of the most common sounds that we use is um so sometimes it's drumming or, or whatever it may be for you but it's that mantra you can do it out loud you can do it quietly or just like in your head and after you chant and, and use these sounds or mantras or whatever it is you're using you're going to be more alert and in tune with your environment without realizing it and at that point you can experience a deeper level of awareness me personally it, it's one of my the reason it's one of my most favorites is because I, I can enjoy this meditation and I find it easier to focus on a word than my breath counting my breath holding my breath it just doesn't quite figure into my head somehow but when I use a mantra um, or just an affirmation or whatever it is I may be focused on it's easier for me but this one here it's actually a good one for people who don't like silence and they can't really focus on being present during silence um, there's loving kindness meditation and this one they, they put it separately and I don't really understand why because at, at that point I think we should always be practicing that loving kindness so it focuses on developing feelings of love and compassion first to yourself learning to love yourself and being kind to yourself and then spreading that so it applies for other people and other entities or whatever it is that you believe in because of course some people believe that the uh, the animals have souls and so it's that love and compassion for yourself first and then for everything else it's used to strengthen your feelings of compassion and kindness and acceptance basically first to yourself love yourself be kind to yourself have compassion and accept yourself the way you are and then you can spread that to other people opening your mind to receive the love from other people it, it's hard to know when somebody loves you because you don't really think about it but just opening up and, and knowing that you're you are loved it's a good time to kind of focus on well wishes for loved ones and friends and acquaintances and all living beings that are going through their own struggles it's a good way to focus on them and being able to kind of send them some of that good energy it's intended to promote compassion and kindness so it works really well for people who are just kind of have an angry disposition or they're, they're holding grudges or resentment and it helps in letting that go and refocusing it on being kind and loving Another one that I find very helpful is guided meditation. And then guided meditation, you kind of just listen to a recorded voice or sometimes they're in person. I've done those where you just do a live video and people are listening and they guide you through a specific meditation. And sometimes they are for specific purposes, but the guided meditation, it's simply meditation with the help of a guide. It's very that, that simple. It's one of the easiest ways to enter because you're not thinking about it, but it's the easy, one of the easiest ways to enter into a deep state of relaxation and inner stillness. You're not the one forcing yourself to do it, but rather listening to someone and you can focus on their words to get you where you need to be. It's one of the most powerful ways to eliminate stress and bring about those positive personal changes that we all strive to. And again, like I said, it can be experienced in a class um, it can be just a friend or a teacher or a mentor. You can use the guided meditations on a lot of the apps or YouTube videos that are out. But they general follow a general format. Um, they'll ask you to sit comfortably. Sometimes you may want to lie down and then you just listen to your guide while they lead you through a series of relaxing visualizations. Sometimes they guide you through the breath work. 
and you just become more and more relaxed and more and more still and you feel the stress just kind of leaving you and it leaves you feeling fresh and new and less weighed down. I think my, this is another one of my favorites, movement, movement meditation. And it's just basically exactly that. It's a meditation that involves using physical movements to get to that mindfulness state, that meditative state. And most people think of yoga when they hear movement, but it's so much more. Um, one of my favorite ways, I'll take a rope and I'll actually make like a labyrinth in the grass. So I do a walking meditation. I intentionally walk and feel the, the ground each time I hit my, the, each time I take a step. And that movement, being conscious of it, um, gardening not so much, but it is a very grounding experience. So I can see where that would be in there. Um, tai Chi and, and other practices such as that where it kind of it's about the gentle movements of feeling in the moment feeling your movement and your muscles and your body in the sway of oneness it's an active form of meditation it guides you into a deeper connection with your own body and noticing where you feel things and being present in that moment of feeling focus meditation this is another one of my favorites because one of the, a couple of the things that you can focus on, it, it's just amazing. It involves concentrating your five senses, using sometimes even your, your sixth sense, um, focusing on something internal like just your breath, feeling it coming into your lungs and, and just filling your lungs, feeling the chill as it passes through your nostrils, and then holding it and, and opening up your chest to hold that air and then letting go. You can also focus on external things. I personally love to use my mala beads and chant with them as I count the mala beads. Um, staring at a candle flame or even just a big fire, a campfire or whatnot. Um, we talked about counting your breath, even like moon gazing and looking up at the stars, focusing on something will give you that meditative state. There's one called progressive relaxation. And it's basically a body scan meditation. And you're, you're aiming to reduce the tension in your body and promote relaxation. And I've done this and it works pretty amazing. Um, it, it basically starts off with you tightening your muscles and just kind of clenching all your muscles in your whole body and then you relax one muscle group at a time throughout your body it it tends to be kind of guided if you want to do it that way and they are great when they are guided so like i said a lot of these are used in combination with other ones to attain the best type of meditation that you need but this tightening of the muscles and then kind of, okay, loosen the muscles in your hand, loosen the muscles in your arms. And little by little, you feel the tension just kind of go away. It's a great thing to do at bedtime when you're laying in bed and you're just kind of getting restless and you can't sleep. That really does put you in a state that you can fall asleep. We've talked about all the different types of meditation, but what does it do for us? Well, why do we want to be in that state? Meditation isn't just about your mind and quieting the mind and refocusing your mind on, on the present. It also has its own physical benefits. We live in a world where stress is like, yay, you know, everybody wants to be stressed because that means you're working hard and it shouldn't be that way. So we need those meditations to, to just kind of shed away some of that stress, lower our blood pressure, we sleep better. It can help with the anxieties and the depressions and your overall well-being because you're feeling things, you're noticing things in your body as you go along with these practices. And of course, there is that metaphysical benefit and, and we know from monks and yogis and ascended masters that 
it has those benefits for us in the metaphysical world. It gives you a greater sense of self-awareness and connection to the world, the divine, the universe. You feel really connected and, and you start to notice the, the quirks in the matrix. It's a tool for personal growth and, and self-discovery. A great time to do a lot of shadow work and digging deep into why you think and do and act the way that you do. It, it leads it, a lot of times to a spiritual awakening where you start to kind of shift your way of thinking. And it starts to enhance your creativity and strengthen your intuition so you can start feeling what it is that's going on around you using your intuition. I remember back years ago when I first started and, and they would tell me, well, you know, there, the, the such and such deity is trying to reach out to you. Or I would get the, um, you're at a very big crossroads in your life. You should go meditate and you'd find the answers or you'll know which deity is reaching out, meditate. And the answer was always meditate, meditate. So I've come to associate meditation with getting answers. It's a place to seek guidance and solutions to your problem. And I think that sometimes we know our own answers, but we can't hear those answers or feel those answers because we're just so wrapped up in what the world expects us to be wrapped up in. But when we slow down and we go into those meditative states, we can start to hear what it is that our answers are coming from within us. So the big I want to say the big difference there is setting an intention when you go into the meditative state. Be patient. It doesn't happen right off the bat. And you've got to trust that those answers will kind of rise up and, and be understood and seen at the right time. But in order to do that, of course, you need to be able to achieve that mental state. And that can be challenging in and of itself. It is why I said about being patient, because you have to continue doing it and build it up with practice, build it up with frequency. It's getting that meditative state starts to become more accessible when you do that. One of the best things you can do is absolutely find a quiet, comfortable space. Some people like to sit on the floor cross-legged. Some people would rather just sit in a chair or in a, on this comfy couch or lay in bed or on the a yoga mat, whatever is comfortable for you, a place that you won't be disturbed. I, I'm fortunate I don't live around any kind of busy roads or anything like that, so I don't have trains or, or trucks outside bothering me. And of course, I, it's just me and my husband, so I don't have children running around. So finding a quiet space in my home is kind of easy, it's pretty much anywhere. But finding that space for yourself. Focusing on that breath or, or a mantra or an object to focus on. A lot of times I will keep a pen and paper next to me when I'm meditating so that when those thoughts come up, instead of getting upset and frustrated that you broke your focus, write down the, the thought. Just write it down. I think sometimes the act of writing it down and not being afraid, oh, I won't remember later, is enough to just kind of push the the thought to the side. Once you can move it to the side, you can return to whatever it was you were focusing on. And over time, you, you'll start entering that state of stillness and deep relaxation with more ease. I think that, that pretty much sums it up. And it's an exploration of meditation and, and what it is, how to achieve it, why do it all those things but at the end of the day i want you to remember it is a personal journey meditation is your own personal journey much like the craft or much like your religions or any of those things it is something that you have to develop and a within a method that resonates with you and setting those intentions it can be very transformative it can be a very enlightening practice bringing you less stress, more mindfulness, and a very serene, calm atmosphere in your own life. Well, I want 
to thank you for joining me in this episode of Mindful Moments. I do hope you found it insightful and inspiring and informative, of course. I urge you to subscribe so that you can get to the other episodes. And I even have a blog up on my website. But until next time, I want you to remember to breathe, be present, and embrace the power of your meditation. Yes, don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Share it with people that you really think would benefit from it, including friends and family. If you have any questions or any comments, maybe even a topic you'd like to hear from, just drop them below. I'd love to get your messages and let me know if I can share experiences that you might send me or whatever, if I can share them on an episode. And of course, if you want to know more about me or the services I offer, you can find out more about my me and my services on my website, www.noemispiritualguide.com, or even on my Facebook, Noemi-Spiritualguide. So my friends, until next week, please love yourself. Be kind to yourself. And above all, let's spread compassion all over the world. 